Welcome to the show. Welcome. All right. So. Another week. First day of September. <sighs> and we're late again. Mother flower. I apologize. <sighs> uh, but I don't. I take. We take no responsibility for our inability to use technology. Yeah. Or. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, so let's dive right into the news. Weird news. Okay, so if I was naming towns, mm-hmm. this would be the name. Okay. Porth Call. Porth Call? Yeah. Like Port Crawl, but yeah. take out some other stuff. <laughs> it's in it's in uh it's in Wales. 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 So the town is putting some uh public restrooms in and they're they call them posh. They're self cleaning public public restrooms. Those are posh. No, oh, I'm telling you. Wait, wait, okay, but first how does it self clean? I don't know, hoses itself down. So like you go in sometimes it's 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 filthy and I other times it's minute, like it's like it's been underwater. If the minute you walk out it self cleans. And I have a couple pairs of shoes that are sl- like don't handle water well. Can you imagine homeless people just walk up, drop their laundry, walk out? Well, Pssh! they want to put an addition in there. Oh no! There is apparently in a Porth Call an issue with people getting randy in their uh, public restrooms. Okay. So they're going to put a device. That measures abusiveness on the uh, toilet, and the water's going to turn on, <laughs> give them a bath. <laughs> so the homeless people are going to go in there and just, you know, they they do on the toilet. That's what it says in the story. I don't know. Uh, it's you know, hey, get it while you can. I guess. Yeah, but but on the toilet, that is gross. Uh, yes, <laughs> but uh, they're self cleaning <laughs> toilets. They're at least self-cleaning. So, okay. So, so two people, a guy and a girl go in there and, and, uh, assume a position. Don't know what the position is. What if it's, uh, like her hands on the back square part and she, you know, anyways, but what if, uh, a rotund gentleman, um, after eating some, uh, (laughs) gone off tacos, (laughs) has to make a break and he's wrestling those pants down Mm -hmm. he's losing balance i mean he's getting lightheaded from this right he's we're talking pucker factor 15 he's hanging on for dear life he sits down a little rough because it's coming and it's on what does he get like an out of the toilet bidet at the same (laughs) time (laughs) or does it have to measure multiple shakes what if he's a big guy with say um what if i a tick yeah what if i have tourette syndrome or a tick and i just want to pee yeah and you sit down and you know the tick makes you wiggle then you get a shower do you have to wear a bathing suit to go use a public restroom now oh my gosh have a spare change of clothes yeah and and what's the pressure of this this water bath i mean are, are it, we talking spray them to the ceiling to really remind them they haven't built them yet this is still in the phase of the city council is voting on it oh my good lord i think what they do is they should just put signs on the door that says there's a video camera on you doesn't have to be a video camera just say it yeah make people think it yeah you know but then the people who want you to know that it's going on They'll still do it. I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Maybe make the public bathroom so small that only yeah. one person can fit. There you go. Like you get in there and the doors close and you're already in the seating. Then how do you uh, uh, sanitize after a bidet? There you go. You know. But, yeah, you still got to drop trowel, you know, to do it outside and then back in. Mm. I don't know. We need to go to the drawing board on this. Invent something. (laughs) 
what an anti-sex bathroom an anti-sex bathroom oh for crying out loud yes you think that that people would be public s- restrooms are disgusting think, stop it you think an ath- anti-sex public restroom is kind of self-explanatory yeah <laughs> yeah like that's kind of like sleeping under the sheets at a hotel self-explanatory you don't do it yeah you uh, don't do it no they're disgusting the level of bacteria in there is not worth it i promise no no you don't want any of your uh any of your important bits uh you know doing uh emergency hand grabber handles like they've got in the <laughs> bathrooms you know the what, what what would you call those the the oh shit handles in the bathroom the the i need traction to get this bad boy out handle i i got a Man, we got to come up with a good name for that. Mm. But anyways, you don't want any of your uh, your wobbly import- bits. Yeah, you don't want any of them giving an accidental rub. You no, might, might lose a digit. Ugh. Come home with a lot more than just a good time. I'll tell you that. Oh my goodness, yeah. Oh, but, but I'm pretty sure if people are at a point where they're just randomly in public restrooms they don't care they're giving the restroom an std yeah for That's, sure that ain't right my story comes to you from florida oh uh, outstanding florida is about to be cleansed by hurricane dorian yeah 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 it, it's bearing down just made landfall mm-hmm. on uh the bahamas uh, from the video i've seen it's uh it's devastating the bahamas so oh wiping it out we're hoping that uh, Florida Man survives this. We're going to start a GoFundMe to save Florida Man because he really does give us the best news. We're rooting for you, buddy. Yeah. Hang in there. This encounter happened at New Smyrna Beach, Florida Central East Coast. It happened Tuesday. Um, I think that this should be listed on the PETA website. I think... Uh, on PETA? Yeah. Okay. It was terrible treatment of an animal. Uh huh. This animal is swimming along. Uh huh. Mind mind its own business. Absolutely bothering nobody. It's in its. Nobody. It's in its own territory. Uh huh. At its house. When this forty-year-old chiropractor Donald Walsh, he just sounds like a dirtbag. Donald Donald Walsh. Walsh. Or no, he sounds like he does like a a true crime television show. So he uh, he decides to. Throw air, as he calls it. So apparently, you throw air by the last, the end of the, the edge of the wave. You, you're, we're talking surfing, right? Surfing. You launch yourself into the air. So you jump. Yeah. How? Oh, let me ask you a question. If you go into a medical practitioner's office. And uh, they're getting ready to do some practice on you. And they go, hey, dude. Yeah. How do you feel at that moment? Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you clamp up a little bit? Maybe wonder if you wandered down the wrong hallway? Yeah. Um, maybe if I'm Florida man, I don't. Yeah. Maybe he's my brother-in-law. Florida man don't care. At any rate, he didn't land it, so to speak. S- smoothly so. hit the water and then continue surfing he instead landed right on the face <laughs> of this six foot shark uh-huh well listen th- this is this is what happens if you land on shark faces so did the shark bite him the shark the shark bit off four fingers on his left hand oh his left calf and s- and shin were also bit. Oh, so he took four fingers. Yeah. You ain't getting those back, Mr. Chiropractor. How you going to do that? <laughs> the whole thing you do, huh? <laughs> He's going to need to find another one-armed uh, partner. Yeah. So, Smyrna Beach, to add to that, is considered the shark attack capital of the world. Of the world? Like of it beats out like Africa and of all the that? world, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So far, nine attacks this year. I wouldn't consider his attack. I would consider his one attack on a shark or eight attacks on people. I would consider his um, 
a feeding. Perhaps. <laughs> don't feed the the yeah, wildlife. It, 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 I don't. Now this shark's going to become dependent. Now here's it's what's going to happen. <laughs> surfers to land on it all the time. It'll forget <laughs> how to chase down its own food. Peter's going to have to get involved. Listen, this Category Five hurricane may make an actual Sharknado now. Oh. And they're going to retaliate. They've had enough of our shit. How far inland do you think this uh, <laughs> hurricane's going to come? Well, it depends. It keeps changing courses, but it's 140 miles wide. Okay. All right. So All if right. if even if the eye just grazes by the cor- by the coast, we're still inland. Oh, we're ways. we're safe. Oh, we're great. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. yeah. We live in the land of uh, Zion. Oh yeah. As they say. Yes, the land of Zion. So yeah. we are. Uh, we're safe from everything. We're holy, really. Yes. Yeah. The chosen ones. Come unto me, my <laughs> friends. <laughs> we'll keep you safe in our mountains. Uh, I mean. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you just made that up. Now I'm going to be singing that for a week. Stay out of the ocean, people. There I love are the ma- ocean. There, it's, I love to see it. I, I don't mind fishing in and it. And I enjoy catching sharks, too. Sure. But people, man-eating fish live there. Yes. Do not be surfing at uh, the most prolific man-eating fish spot on the planet. You may lose a couple of fingers, Mr. Chiropractor. But dude, <laughs> my appointment's all canceled. <laughs> Their backs were straight, dude. <laughs> no, mine's twisted. <laughs> ah, seriously. Right. Does it say which hand? Left hand. His left hand. So probably more than likely he's right handed. So it wasn't his operating hand. So, you know, at least there's not going to be a travesty when he goes visits these uh, Welsh bathrooms. Yeah. And he's lucky. He's lucky that the shark went easy on him because he could have just opened up, gobbled him up. Well, six foot. Called it a day. It had been full. At probably two arms. Yeah, probably. Yeah. See, that's one of my. Have I ever told you one of my greatest fears? No. That I lose my operating hand? Because if I have to learn to with this hand, <laughs> how long will that take? <laughs> what would, uh, I mean, what would your life look there would like? be a travesty. It, 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 I would have to, like, I would have to go out in the front yard and get the hose with the sprayer nozzle on it and just go in after I'm done and just hose the walls down. I, it'd be, yeah, it'd be a mess. And it would not to, I'd have to clip my fingernails real short. I'm telling you, when I had my shoulder surgery done on my primary shoulder, uh huh, it was, it was terrifying. Oh, you know what I do? I mean, even eating with a fork, I've got grandkids under a year old that were more steady, and poking at, in your eye, yeah, at getting it into into their mouth. It was terrible. I'd get myself a Dewalt drill. <laughs> it just Kay. flip it. <laughs> no, you mount it on the other side of the wall. Okay, mm-hmm. so that the nose comes through. Mm-hmm. And have like a little, uh, you know, a little tightening rubber number on the end of it. And you slide a brand new roll of toilet paper on it, right? Uh-huh. And have it hooked to a foot pedal. And you just <laughs> step spin, on the foot spin, pedal and back spin. up on it. <laughs> and just kind of back and forth <laughs> on it, right? So gross. And then you come a off. A roll of toilet paper? No, and then you peel off the toilet paper that got worked over real good by you. And then step on the foot pedal again. You got to hit it three times. It's a rule of three, uh, really. You you touch it when you're done to pull it off. Well, okay, Betsy. <laughs> if I had to learn with this hand, I'd be touching it anyhow. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> One way or another, I'm touching it. Oh. At least then I could maybe have a reverse spin. It sits right above the garbage can. Another a pedal. A reverse spin. A reverse spin, so it unrolls some, right? Mm-hmm. And then you just tear off the clean part, let it fall, and then other button again. So you got you got the spin to make it go angel's way, <laughs> and the spin to make it go devil's way. Like in magic, you've got the right hand path and the left hand path. That's yes. what I would do. Oh, uh, yeah, it was it was tragic. I I don't feel bad for this chiropractor. Well, shark got a mill out the deal. Yeah, yeah. I don't go back from. I wonder if swimming sharks along. Whoa, whoa, think, uh, you know, yeah. if they have thoughts. 
scared it, peed itself a little bit in the water, and now his fingers are shark poop. Yeah. How about them apples? That's right. All right. So, coming up on Halloween. <gasps> well, I know we're getting on it a little early. Ain't even it, not, October no. yet. September 1st? Halloween's officially begun. Yeah. I There's nothing it. in September to even worry about. It's Halloween. Well, now that you mention it. That's right. It's officially Halloween time. So, I want to talk werewolves. I, I'm, uh, werewolves are freaky. There's a lot of stuff about them. They're, they're from, uh, there's wear everything. It's probably, you know, wear maggots and, you know. Stop it. Wear everything. But I want to talk werewolves. That's the one that's ingrained in the psyche of man. I guess in India there's wear tigers. That would be the scariest. That would be really scary because they're yeah. fast and, and stealthy. They're big. And that's that's the big. That's the beast of the feast right Ooh. there. Anyway, so I want to talk about, I want to tell the story. No, well, I won't lead off with the name, but the year is 1589. It's October 1589. Dun, like dun, dun. Late October. <gasps> October 26, 27. What? Just near Halloween? Of mm-hmm. course it is. A man is tied to a rack. A rack is a torture device, a medieval torture device. It's like a table that on one end just has rings that you that either with ropes or chains you tie a man to and on the other side has ropes that come off of a winch that you tie the other side of the man to so you can tie him this way or this way however you tie this man's tied to a rack with ropes they use ropes specifically because he's missing his left hand so what do they do after they tie them to this rack well they, they use, stretch? They use stitch knots, yeah, and they winch and stretch the body, and the joints are popping, and it's tearing uh, ligaments. Terrible. Under this torture, the man admits that at the age of 12, he gets into the occult and witchcraft and sorcery. He meets with the devil and makes a deal with the devil for to... Uh, not for riches or gold or anything, but to satiate an appetite like a one a serial killer would have. So he meets with the devil at 12 years old. Where does a 12-year-old find the devil? Uh, you know, fifth in state, I suppose. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> I haven't met with the devil lately. <laughs> it's you know, always fifth in state. It depends on the town. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's a really young. Yeah. I mean, okay, it's a different time, yeah, obviously, back f- then. This is the 1500s. He's already had seven kids. and He's taking know. care of the farm on his mm-hmm. own. I mean, you know, I mean, what, in the 1500s, you got, what, 18 more years of life left? I mean, he's over the hump soon. That's true. Anyhow, he wants, he wants to satiate his, uh, his appetite for my PC is all of a sudden just crashed yeah anyways he wants to satiate his appetite for blood and murder and so the devil gives him a belt they call it a girdle in the story so it's a really thick white belt like what santa claus would wear a santa claus belt he's a were elf or a were (laughs) Uh, a were fat guy (laughs) but when he puts on the belt he turns into a werewolf and uh you know it, with so he wants to turn into a werewolf he makes this deal with the devil or with well the devil. it doesn't go into whether he just it doesn't go into whether he specified a werewolf or he just wants to satiate his bloodlust he just the, wants to be able to and satan decides that that's the best means okay so he turns into a werewolf this is near bedburg germany he uh so he starts out and he would kill mostly women. That was his target of opportunity he, or his target of choice was women, though he did kill men as well. For 25 years, he he just would lure a woman into the woods or find a woman walking alone at night, put on this belt, and he would just kill her and drink her blood. 
It was like it was like he was giving himself permission to do it. Or a better means to do it. So in his Okay, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I have so many questions. So so he's killing these women for twenty five years. Now or he's killing. He's on a spree for twenty five years. But in parts through that they start noticing a lot of people missing. And so people start wandering around armed and in groups, which kind of, kind of makes it so that he can't perform his hunts. So during those times, to satiate his bloodlust, he'll go and kill livestock in the fields. Does he wear the belt for that? Yes. He, he's kind of a wealthy guy. He's a landowner. Everyone in the town likes him in human form. Obviously, when he's a werewolf, people don't seem to care for him much. I can't imagine why. Now, there have been some reports of wolves coming out about 15, 20 years into it, but people are maybe thinking that just wild wolves are coming in. Well, he gets, he, he like a serial killer, he kind of advances. And the story kind of sounds like he starts making some of the kills in human form. Ooh. There's one time there's a group of three people, two men and a woman, that he's familiar with walking home and they're walking skirting the 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 forest as they walk to their house he hides in the trees and calls out the name of one of the men and calls him over he comes over he kills him quick and then he he calls over the other man and kills him and then runs out and kills the woman well how he kind of gets caught as the werewolf because he as the werewolf, he has glowing red eyes, he's bigger than a normal wolf, and he's missing his left hand, because in human form, he's missing his left hand. So, uh, they shapeshift, but they keep their... I think I mean, they if, can I, if, I'm, if I'm a guy in a wheelchair... They can only shapeshift with what they have. So, if I'm a guy in a wheelchair and I don't have access to my legs... It might make your I legs become, work, but if you didn't have legs, then I imagine the legs wouldn't be there. And then we'd have to build you one of them doggy wheelchairs. <laughs> and so you'd be running around. You'd hear the squeaking of the squeak, wheels squeak, squeak, coming squeak. up behind you. It'd get kind of rough. I mean, people, they would they would probably, the squeaky <laughs> sound would be like the thump drag of scary ghost stories you tell around a campfire. It, it would be worse than a regular werewolf, I'm sure. That could be our next campfire story at the family <laughs> reunion. The squeaky wolf. So anyways, <sighs> one time... He, he spots a young girl alone, right? This is, this is at the 25 years. This is 1589. He spots a young girl alone. Um, she's, she's like a preteen. Okay. It's dusk. She's standing out in her family's field. Her parents aren't anywhere around. So he comes charging out in his wolf form and goes to bite her neck but she's wearing a high thick collar like dress you know those old mm -hmm. numbers that they used to wear and it doesn't kill her but she lets out a big bellowing scream and it causes the cows in the field to trample but they trample right at him so he darts off into the woods the family runs out they find this girl and she tells them that a, a wolf attacked her so the city assembles a, a militia to go after this killer this wolf the militia goes out and they're hunting for it and they're getting close and getting close well finally they spot the wolf and the wolf runs into this cusp of trees they think they have it pinned in they surround this cusp of trees and out walks peter stump he in, just human, in human form so now, he either just happened to be there or or He's the wolf. Now, half of the militia explains they actually watched him change from wolf form to man form. Really? And the other half didn't. But that could be because they've got the trees surrounded and some of them, their vision can't see it. Could also be that some of them kind of, you know, made it up. That herd mentality. One guy says it and then yes. another guy says, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw that too. So... They escort him home. They call the magistrate. Magistrate calls calls kind of a, a court, calls the sheriff, and they put him on the rack. 
So he's laying there admitting to all this. He's admitting to who he's killed. He admits to killing 16 people. They believe there's more. While on the rack. While on the rack. Peter is a a widower that has a, that had a son who died and then had a daughter and then um his daughter had a child his daughter was unwed and his son was dead his son died young one of peter's killings that he admitted to was killing and eating the brains of his son the rage just overcame they were like walking home and it just overcame him and he admitted to that yep and so he told his son hey i gotta pee on this tree walk on ahead son's walking son was eight years old at the time puts on the belt runs out kills the boy eats his brains (sighs) his daughter with the child she's unwed with the child so he admits to um uh incest with his daughter and that the child of his daughters is actually his what yes he admits to having incestuous relations with his sister and he also has a mistress now because he had been married before he really couldn't get married again at this time for whatever reason i don't know if he had to go through permission through a church or whatever so he just had a mistress her name was uh, Catherine Trompen, said to be the most beautiful woman in all the area. Beautiful, fair, you know, this, this pamphlet that the story comes from is hard to read. It's written in <laughs> Middle English. <laughs> yeah. V's are used, but only at the beginning of words, <laughs> but then they're v's at the middle and vice versa with the u's it's it's hard always an e at the end i planned on reading this to you guys but i would have had to struggle through it and this maybe 150 word pamphlet would have been a seven part (laughs) miniseries because it's me struggling through i'd need a lot more practice but it is beautiful the way it's written the story's horrendous but the way it's written is flowery and they do they expend a lot of energy on making words out of it so after this confession on the rack he is um put to death october 31st 1589 on halloween 1589 on the wheel did they celebrate Psalm Wayne back then? Or were there pagan rituals that gave that day significance significance back then or was it just that was just th- that was just the timeliness of his trial and happened what? on the his trials started on the twenty eighth. There's no such thing. And he was executed on the thirty first. No, they would not have celebrated Samhain back then. Uh Samhain comes from Ireland, I believe. It wasn't even celebrated in Ireland back then because Catholicism had pushed all of that pagan worship out. It's only come back in the last, I think, 120 years. Well, I mean, he had to have been a werewolf if this is all how the way it played out. Oh, it's like timing. Yeah. Now, they went out looking for the belt. The the militia did. And they couldn't find it. So they, they proposed that the devil took the belt back to hell you know the devil came once his tool was captured and gone he took the belt back so peter is subjected to the will as his means of execution okay so the rack is not meant for execution it's meant for torture the rack is meant for confession and then he confesses oh yes and now he's been now he's deemed yes. guilty and now he's yes. been sentenced to death sentenced to execution by the wheel okay what is the wheel the wheel is a carousel it's like a, you sit on it it's a they lay you down on it oh so you, you know when they throw knives at the ladies in yes the yes uh-huh and they spin picture them? that okay okay 
It's a big wagon wheel, tall as a man. You're tied to it. Okay. So I don't know if for fun they had it spinning while they did this or they just left it upright. I imagine they just left it upright. You know, it's hard to do your dirty deed when the guy's spinning. I mean, you don't want to make the executioner have to work for it. What? So with red hot pincers like uh like big pliers, they peel ten strips of flesh off him. So they heat him up in a fire, pinch onto him, and then just rip flesh from him. Ten places. Oh, okay. Uh, he um it, it peels off in chunks or like it peels off uh, the way it explains it in strips. How? I don't know. It doesn't go into that. Okay. It could be the red hot pincers. They could make initial cuts. Maybe it's <sighs> practice, or maybe it just yanks off a bit. I've never tried, so I yeah. guess, I guess perhaps that's how people are. And I don't understand the, why the pincers have to be red hot. Does that do something for you, or does it just add a little bit of initial pain before they tear skin off of you? Yeah. I yeah. Okay. Anyways, they tear. They tear. 10 strips off him. It's specific on 10. That may have something to do with the level of crime. Who knows? Then they take a, a wooden axe and with the blunt end of it, they break his arms and legs so that he cannot return from the grave. So the huh. body can't return from the grave. And then after that, they cut off his head. So... And then they take the body and they throw the body, the corpse, not the head, just the body on a pyre and burn the pyre. So they... Uh, okay, so they burn the body, but why'd they break the legs and the arms? So he can't return from the dead. Yeah, but they burned him. He's going to be a pile of ash. That's a good point. And maybe they were going on the fly. <laughs> maybe they were just pissed. <laughs> they were just improvising. Now, this young lady, that young lady with the high collar and her parents were witnesses against him in court. They swore to what they saw. And then, that's a, just an aside. So, it's a, it could be a case of them imagining things or it could be a case of a real werewolf. Okay. So they, they throw him on the pyre. Yep. They light him on fire. Yep. Then they accuse his uh, daughter, Sybil, and his mistress, Catherine, of being accessories. So they strangle them and then throw them on the pyre with him. Wow. So they're they're gone too now. Even Kath though there was no account of them being present, just the idea that they may have uh, they may have intimate knowledge of his crimes. Yes, and and now Sybils may also be a part of the uh, incestuous relationship. Catherine was so beautiful; they figured that she had to be a familiar sent to him from Satan. A succubus. Yes, a succubus. Just because she was pretty. Yeah. All pretty women, succubus. Yes, beautiful women are succubi. Succubi, succubuses. <laughs> so they're they're killed along with him. Now, what? The creepy part is this isn't. It gets creepier. Yes, they take the will and they make like a little monument in the center of town with the will. So they build a little base, and they build a little post, and then they stick the will on the post. And on the will, they put a carving of the wolf, and then on top of it, they put his head. Like they went to a local artist and... and Maybe multiple artists. Oh, artisans. Maybe a guild of artisans worked on this macabre... Monument to... Yes, this... this uh, werewolf death. Statue. Okay, so... But... There is some controversy. We'll follow that up after your question. Did they stop? Did the did the? I mean, was that it? They they st all of the killing stopped with him. It doesn't say. Oh. This comes from a pamphlet that I would tell you the name of the guy, but my computer just collapsed where all my notes are, so I'm going off the top of my head now. 
I think. So, oh, okay. So this guy found the, the the original writings. The original writings written in High Dutch, which I guess is different than now Dutch. I don't know. And he translated it into Middle English, which I can tell you is different from English now. Yes, very much. Yes, he may as well just left it in Dutch and had <laughs> me read that because <laughs> they, they, he, yeah, they throw an E on the back of everything. If the letter's at the beginning of the word, it's a different letter. You've got to decipher it. I need a, I need a Rosetta Stone. <laughs> I need a Umum and Thummim. I need all that stuff. I need to, yeah, it took me a minute to work my way through it. But, so he wrote it and distributed this pamphlet as part entertainment like a story mm -hmm. and part kind of warning you know religious warning don't make deals with the devil this is how it ends up it, the whole thing ends off with the prayer like the last word in the pamphlet is amen it's only a 16 page pamphlet so he was probably religious mm -hmm. and it was using this as a way to uh, it, I think everyone back then would have been religious. Yeah. It, the the pamphlet, you can find it online. It's called The Damnable Life and Death of One Stump Peter. Wow. So it's, a, it's an interesting story. Only two pamphlets survive. They're in a museum slash library in England right now. So what's the controversy? Well, so... This is the end of of the uh, of kind of the uprise, the end of the thirty years thirty years war, where the Protestants kind of uprised and tried to make Protestantism the state religion of Germany. Catholicism was the state religion. They tried overthrowing Catholicism. It was actually a Catholic cardinal that did it. And the Catholic wins, the Catholics win, and throw the Protestants out. And they're in Bedburg, where the Protestant uprising started, is now the home for the Catholic militia. At that time? At that time. Oh. So they took over the castle of Bedburg. Mm -hmm. stayed there, kept the militia there, and kept the Catholic stronghold there. So he may have been a Protestant holdout. He was a Protestant. So this might... Now, the Protestant people stayed there. They just... Protestantism just wasn't the dominant, the state religion. Protestantism was allowed, but they were... What's the difference kind between... Of Second class citizens. Catechism and Protestant. Uh, a lot of it started out with when you're baptized versus baptized at right after you're born uh -huh. or baptized when you're eight years old. So there are there clear distinctive differences between the two so much so that, that you would just stick to it? Or do you think it was just a sign of the times that this is how I was raised, this is all I know? He was a he was a recent convert to Protestantism, like within you know within the time of the Thirty Years' War. Wow! And that he may have converted to Protestantism because that's where Protestantism started. Yeah. And he may have did that go along to get along. Yeah. So he might have just been, hey, well, they're the bosses right now. I'm one of them. And then the Catholics come in, and he's like in the middle of saying, "I'm one of you guys. I I was just kidding when I." And then they, you know. Gave him a belt made of nipples, made him into a werewolf. Yep. Ed gained him. <laughs> Ed gained him. <laughs> okay, so aside from this belt made of nipples. <laughs> belt made of nipples. <laughs> we don't know if it's made of nipples. Belt made of wolf nipples. <laughs> it just sounds like it should be made of nipples if it turns you into a werewolf. Yes. Uh, what are some other ways that you can become a werewolf? Well, in... Eastern Europe, it was common for wives to put curses on husbands. Like if they were bad? Uh, yeah. Like you're a bad husband. Bad husband. You're now a, a really bad werewolf. You didn't like my shepherd's pie. How dare you not put the, so then what the would bog seat down? What do they call them <laughs> back then? 
<laughs> you know? I don't know. You know so you never <laughs> listened to me. <laughs> I tried telling you that the, you know, I don't know, the rickety <laughs> wooden door wasn't closing right. And, you know, that rope was tired. So, bam, you're a wolf. Now. Were they killed for changing their husbands into wolves or were there wor- their Some husbands? women were tried. What, so would they be tried for witchcraft? Uh, yes. And then their husbands would also be killed because they were werewolves? Sometimes. What the hell? Now, that was Eastern Europe. We don't have a lot of records of that. That's older than this Peter Stump. Okay. That's that's we're talking back to the 1400s, you know. Okay, so what are some other ways? Well. You can be bit, right? you got King Lachios, which is where lycanthrope comes from. He, in testing Zeus's omnipotence, killed his own son and cooked him and made him into a <coughs> pie, a meat pie, uh, a junior pie. <laughs> <laughs> and was trying to feed him to Zeus. And Zeus caught on immediately, brought his son back to life. So now there's a junior pie with arms and legs. It's walking around and saying hi and stuff. Great. Or whatever Greek say for hi back in ancient Greece and turned the king into a wolf. And that's where lycanthrope comes from. There's also curses. Which could include a curse that means when sun or when moonlight hits you, you become a wolf, uh-huh. or you become a wolf annually, or or on a certain. Now day. that's the most traditional. That's story the one that kind of that, kicked that, that on kind with of us. Stuck. That moonlight caused that change, and there's reason why why uh, lunar actions stick in human minds as times when more bad things happen. Okay. If they look at it statistically, it doesn't really have much of a difference from full dark. From, from any no other time. New moon, I guess. They, you know. But what, um, what it is is when the full moon's out, you can see. Because we, we are not nocturnal. We are not nocturnal. So, so more people are out active, and that includes more criminals and also more people to catch the criminals. Makes sense. So that's where that kind of theory comes from. But when they look at crime, crime kind of stays the same. So what? Are, uh, now, I've heard of a salve. Yep, there's ointments that Satan gives you and can turn you into a werewolf or witches. One of the ointments said that they could give you was made with, um, I'll try to remember, uh, it was bear fat, uh, some wild plant, um, was it jackroot or something like that, jackroot and wolf blood, and you mix that together and make an ointment. Uh-huh. The, you know, we, went, we covered curses, ointments. And then the belt, the belt's a real common one coming from Germany. It seems like Germany really gave a lot of uh, interest into belts. There are more recent stories, as late as World War I, of belt-inducing werewolves that I will tell on another time. Okay, so are they treated the same? Werewolves who want? I mean, because we've clearly got two distinctions here. We've got guys who Who apply salve. Uh-huh. And you know, pull the old werewolf so belt out. So those are out. people that decide to become yeah, a werewolf. Yeah, they they want to be a werewolf. Uh, and then there's the cursed ones who, you know, don't want to be a werewolf, mm-hmm. but with the moonlight or the curse or or whatever, mm-hmm. they change into a werewolf. Were they both treated the same as far as the trials? You mean in the courts and trials? I think it probably depended on the trial. But, I mean, let's look at the witch trials. you got witch trials in, um, in England and, and Europe where a lady may have been a widow, ugly, and people just didn't like her attitude. And there were women that were put on trial for absolutely nothing. The witch trials in Salem, if you read through that mm-hmm. and what came of that, it sounds like most of those trials were done just so that the the judge could have their property yeah or the convictions were done for that 
Interesting. A lot of the accusations just came from, you know, whoever the dumbest animal on earth. What is the dumbest animal on earth? Listeners, you're going to hear it first here today. That'd be people. The teenage girl. Yeah. Dumbest animal on earth. Now, what's the shittiest animal on earth? I don't know. The teenage boy. <laughs> now, you have to have the teenage girl be the dumbest animal on earth. Because otherwise, there'd be no people. That's true. Because what else would let the shittiest animal on earth anywhere near him? That's true. It's and the perfect combination. It's divine intervention into humanity, if you ask me. Werewolves, what do you think? I, what do I want? I kind of want them to be real. Like you want to be, you know. Abducted. You want you want butt stuff from an alien. You Listen, about. I've had it. They still haven't showed up. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe they have. I'm on Kegels every <laughs> night. I'm telling you. I'm doing Kegels. I'm, I want to get to where I can do Kegels in my sleep. So <laughs> when they knock me out and put the membrane, the almost see-through membrane over me, mm-hmm. and they get ready with that suction cup finger, I can Kegel asleep, like knocked out. I want to get to where, I want to get to where while I'm asleep, I'm in clench. I'm talking. I am. I, I want to be measured in bar and foot pounds. <laughs> I want to make sure that if I'm going to be violated by one of them little gray they're or gonna green bastards, it. they're going to earn it. They're going to earn they're it. Gonna earn, uh, matter of fact, like said shark, they're going to come away a few fingers less. <laughs> I think uh, I think that there's a, a part of the human psyche now that supports wolves, werewolves. Some werewolves don't turn into wolves. Well, what? Some of them are just an attitude change. And wolves commonly... In, like in, that guy we shared? Like that guy we shared. He could really be a werewolf. Commonly in ancient Germany, people who didn't get along with the community were called wolves. Just because they were unruly and... yeah. Yeah, it could be a drunkard. Could yeah, be but a that doesn't make any sense because your wolves live in packs. Why don't they call them like I don't know coyotes? Do coyotes live in packs? Oh yes. Um, okay, what's something that doesn't live in packs? Call them uh, wolves live in packs. That doesn't <laughs> even make any sense to be like you're an outcast. You're a loner. You're a wolf. <laughs> I think because wolves were. One of the greater threats to humanity at the time. So that's that's what I'm wondering, is if just in the human psyche, there was this connection made because they were the the primary predator in most of these areas. I think so. I mean, and not just that they would kill humans, but they were the primary predator for your livestock. A coyote right. isn't going to mess with a uh, full-grown heifer. Yeah, a cow. Sure. Or, or even, you know, a coyote will mess with the sheep, a, coy- a pack of coyotes. But a pack of wolves will mess with a horse. So I think that we find that with most cryptids, minus the greys and such. Um, but they really, like the chupacabra, mm-hmm. it, it's in a, a definite area. Um, the skinwalkers are in a definite area, and they take on specific forms mm-hmm. of, of local animals. So this whole werewolf thing... I mean, it's like a European skinwalker. Yeah. And they. A sorcerer that made a deal with the devil to either lay a curse on someone or to become it himself. Just crazy. And then they were put on the rack for that. How long was the rack used? A long time? I I haven't a clue. I, I, that'd be a good show. Just talking about medieval. Torture. Yeah, that's a show you should do medieval. I don't want to read about that torture and confession and murder devices. I mean, the interesting like guillotine, the guillotine Uh was invented by a doctor. You know why? No. So he could ensure that the execution was done humanely. Oh, because when they did it with an axe, they missed a lot. Hack and hack. And there are stories of men and women who were subject to, in the teens, wax. What? There are sometimes, there was a, 
Uh, a I don't special want place in hell. Special place in hell for these, these executioners. Well, a lot of times executioners weren't volunteers for that job. Oh, they were forced to do like, it. Like, say you're a janitor. Oh. There's a famous story that we'll tell at another time. But like a janitor has said, this is your job today. This is what you'll do. Mm. And it ruined that man. He did not want to do it. I think most humans do not want to kill people. Yeah. I think it's uncommon for someone to have a a, a a thirst for murder. Very uncommon. Wouldn't it have been cool if instead they would have like... Um, catapult. <laughs> you always go back to catapult. I want a catapult. <laughs> but no, what if they had just caged these people and then studied transformation like the beginnings but, but they couldn't find the belt oh that's true nipple no nipple belt no yeah. nipple salve no. satan takes it back no it's true yeah it's true nipple salve nipple like, salve like like joggers <laughs> like the runners joggers nipples. rub <laughs> yeah boy wouldn't that be rough you one night feeling lonely and going to have your way with yourself and you reach for the lotion and grab the wrong stuff. Grab the nipple salve. Oh, dang it. Oh. Now I'm hairy. <laughs> now I'm playing Red Rocket. <laughs> I'm sorry I took us there, guys. <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> maybe we'll leave it in. Maybe we'll edit that part out. It is what it is. It is what it is. Thanks but for yeah, joining. That's the story of Peter Stump. Um, my computer is now starting back up. But go on, look up the damnable life of Stump Peter. It is, um, it's hard as hell to read, but it's, it's in an a way, interesting look into the psyche. In a way, it's written beautifully. If, if we ever go to England, I want to go to said museum and, and see, see it. it. I want to see what this pamphlet looked like. And pamphlets were big back in the, uh, Sure, because and the hand the writing was always very large. I want to I want to do a side subject about weirdness. Here's weirdness. How come every time a new means of communication comes around, there seems to be an uproot and strife in humans? Mm. The Gutenberg press comes around. Well, I think it's um shortly after you have uproot and strife between Catholicism, uh -huh. Protestantism, and Baptism, and all those other isms break off. You have the telegraph come around. The United States goes into civil war. Yeah. I think it's because ideas are spread. Hey, yeah, ideas, good and sure. bad, are viruses. Sure. Right now, we have the Internet, and America, or the United States, well, heck, what? The world is in kind of some chaos. You've got things going on in Hong Kong that are chaos. You've got... Hong Kong's a mess. Yeah, you've got things going on between Europe and England that are in chaos. Uh -huh. Here in the United States, in more of the populous areas, we don't have any of these issues here because we, okay. we live in a small and back small to your, town in back a small to your state. Yeah. Yeah. But... It, on the coasts and a lot of the larger cities, it's in chaos. There's there's people going to violence over some uh, sometimes kind of radical ideas. It's kind of I I think it can come back to the ability to assemble, the ability to um, take your ideas and and let them grow within like minded individuals in your group each one of those advances in technology gave new abilities to yeah that. new abilities to and that's to what find I, to find your tribe that was to a, find your people that was a thought that kind of popped in my head the other day like is this it is you know just like i was just thinking well i was thinking about uh about this story and i was like oh this is right after the gutenberg press you know uh -huh. within a hundred years of it and then I'm like, oh, wow, that's weird. The Gutenberg Press comes out, and, and the Bible's finally printed into the language of the parishioner. Uh -huh. And an idea is spread that these guys may not have been honest all the time, these, these priests. Sure. Or they may have been a little more self-serving. 
and we can go into France had a really goofy system. And then, so how crazy is just this? It seems like the, a new means of communication brings strife. Like yeah. right now, it seems like the internet is the focal point for the strife that we have. What do you think the next form of communication is going to be? You think uh, it's going to be artificial intelligence? I think telekinesis. No, I think <laughs> I think there's going to be something plugged into our brain where we're always interconnected with each other. Honestly, it's where I think it's going. I mean, they're already talking about it. Oh. Imagine the drama that will ensue. No, oh, it'll be fun. <laughs> oh. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, that was a good show. Thanks let for us, joining us. Let us know what you think about werewolves. Yeah, or if you've got any good werewolf stories, we want to hear those. If you are a werewolf, please contact us. Yeah, yeah. And we're still reaching out any vampires ever. Please give us a... Okay. Shoot us an email. Uh, Anything. Uh, uh, send us a pigeon. <laughs> you can rent one of those airplanes that drag <laughs> a streamer <laughs> across the sky. You can, um, you know, however you choose. Don't to message in a bottle. There's not an ocean anywhere near us. So remember, this is the land of Zion. Yes. For we are safe here <laughs> in our mountains. <laughs> But yeah, thanks for joining us. But yeah, we really need to get a hold of one of these vampires. And there are werewolf groups. Betsy has been s doing some research. Yeah. That's coming up soon. But there are people who are um, uh, uh, who are members of werewolf groups. Clans. I'm not going to say whether they're, they're they're clans. Clans. Yes. Yes. We're, we're gonna we're gonna cover werewolf clans in an upcoming show. Yes. I'm going to even give you ways that you can identify which clan you belong to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's educational, really. Uh well, <laughs> it's a service to humanity, <laughs> um, or wolf manity, man wolfity. <laughs> yeah, man wolfity. It's a service to man wolfity. Yes, but um, you know, <coughs> we don't want to disparage anyone with this, but we want to explore it. It's an sure. interesting subject. It, oh, way interesting. It's yeah. it's pretty dang cool. Yeah. I think it, it's it's exciting times that we live in where people can, like the internet, there would not be these wolf clans. No, with but for. Yes. Can you imagine how long it would take the Gutenberg press to get around and, and determine which clan you belong that to? That one was a big one because you had to whittle out the letters and then you had to line them up right. And then V's were used if they were at the beginning <laughs> of the sentence. And, and then there was a big old crank with a big old, you know, a big old like bolt in it. And you cranked it down and pressed it. Ugh, and you were done and unpressed it. And you had one. Okay. Set it aside. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, it was a big deal. Anyway, thanks for joining. Yes, thanks for joining us. Have a great week. Bye.